We're gonna take a look at another keyboard today. And this one is the Rocket Vulcan 121 AMO. And I'm gonna tell you why I've been using this keyboard now exclusively for the past six months. And it probably is my favorite keyboard that I have of my lot. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why I switched over to this Rocket uh, Vulcan 121 AMO keyboard here in just a second. I think in the beginning here, I'm gonna tell you why I switched, uh, you know, as opposed to reverse of going over the specs and then tell you why, I don't know, just how I'm doing it today. I had been using the K70 Lux RGB from Corsair for quite some time. And this is, as far as the keyboard itself, is an awesome keyboard. I love this thing. Uh, I know we're gonna talk about the Rocky here in a second, but this keyboard has great feel. It's Cherry MX switches, just a great overall keyboard. The feature set on it, everything just seems to work and I loved it. However, last spring, uh, Corsair tried to do something interesting with the, core, the IQ software and that was integrate ASUS's lighting effects into uh, their software, which is uh, concept-wise is great. I mean, imagine if I could go in and have one software and I could no longer use that ASUS Aura software, which I'm not banging on ASUS right now, but that software is just pure garbage. Constantly locks up, doesn't work right. There's just so many complaints on it. I've even done a video as to how to fix as much of it as I can. And it doesn't seem to matter, just is not great software behind it. And I think that's what happens with a lot of hardware these days is people start using the hardware, they're excited, and then that company's software comes in and it's usually such garbage, it just creates so much frustration that people start bagging on the hardware itself and it's not always the hardware's problem. Well, in this situation, the hardware wasn't the problem. IQ did this creative thing and brought in the idea of, hey, let's, let's integrate uh, ASUS's Corsair software or, or ASUS's lighting software into our IQ. The downside is, is their software assumes that you only use Corsair memory. So Trident, Z, uh, G Scope memory doesn't exist and Team Forest memory doesn't exist according to them and nobody else's memory exists according to IQ. So the problem that would then lie is you'd still have to have ASUS's Aura software running in the background or whatever else you wanted to try to use to run your RGB memory unless you shut the lights off, of course. This created constant locking up of the computer and the failing of additional software was just a massive mess. So after going back and forth with uh, Corsair for several months of, hey, you know, is there a way to shut off this feature so that I can at least use it the way it was before? They just said no, and it is what it is, and no, we're not going to support other memories at this time. Now, this is some time ago. I haven't gone back and checked it in quite some time, purely because I just gave up. So then I had been using um, my Rocket Mouse. I use the leader for my MMO gaming. I play mostly Star Wars The Old Republic. That's my main game I like to play. But if I'm not using that, then I went and I used their Amo uh, mouse, which this mouse, I gave one away here this past spring. This thing is awesome. I just, as far as a simple click point mouse that works, that thing is amazing. Well, their software Swarm, for the most part, is very good intelligent software. Couple minor things, I, and I can't even call them faults, but just minor things I don't particularly like that I think they could have dev better, but that's okay, that's minor. How it works for the whole system is awesome. They don't try to throw things in there that, that they don't need to. It doesn't cause conflicts. It's very little um, system usage. It just works. So ever since I shut off IQ, I've had nothing but a great experience with my computer overall. So that's what we're gonna dig into here is, first off, as opposed to talking about the keyboard, which is awesome, I'm gonna show you the software and why it's so simple to use, and then we'll talk about the keyboard here. Um, so actually I'm gonna bring up the software. So Rocket Swarm is very simple. The idea of their products just seem to kind of integrate, right? So I've got my, my leader mouse that I can go in and I can uh, control here. I've got the Kane 200 AMO, which is the mouse I gave away this last spring that again, I think this is a great mouse. I got my profiles down here that I can use. And then I got my keyboard, right? And whatever else I decided to use. And just overall, this thing works very well. Just really simple features. I can go in and assign keys. I can use simple macros. Uh, it's just the, the ability to customize this keyboard through their software 
is very, very simple. And I can reassign pretty much everything on here, right? Well, we can go beyond, well, I'm gonna get out of that list view. I'm gonna go beyond this and, and you know, I wanna customize the lighting. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is my only area that I think that they really could improve on. Now, why the AMO Intelligent Lighting is really what I typically leave it all set on because it's got some pretty cool effects. Things such as wave, I should be able to program the colors I want to choose. Instead, it just says, this is gonna be a wave program and here's the colors and that's that. Which I guess for a simple user is fine, but I like to theme or coordinate the theme of my computer. I have more of a purple and a light blue that I like to use, like an ice blue, if you will, for my the coloring in my uh, my main gaming computer, Genesis. I like to do the same thing in the lighting behind me at times. I would like to be able to customize that on my keyboard, my mouse. Again, that's my only real complaint. And if that's my only real complaint, I can't even call that a complaint. That's very minor. So you've got these different features. You can go in here, the snake and, and all this kind of stuff, which is, is all fun. Uh, I just leave it on an AMO Intelligent because again, how it is right now, and that's fine. Um, the ability to create uh, profiles and simply put them in there and have auto switching, awesome. Overall, their software just works. I mean, that's how it's supposed to be, right? So that way you're not focusing on, oh, I can't stand this keyboard because of the software. And again, that's the reason I stopped using my Corsair keyboard was because of the software. And that's unfortunate because it felt amazing. I, I, it just, it worked all the time. So, you know, then this is gonna be really a quick, kind of a quick overview uh, slash review, if you will. Um, but getting back to this, so I'm gonna get out of uh, the software portion that's I can hear, and we're gonna come in, just take a look at what uh, Rocket advertises it at. This keyboard is typically $159.99, which I think for the price point is a little expensive, but they are their own mechanical switches and I'm okay with it. It, it is a nice, I mean, the keyboard's fairly stiff. It's not amazing, uh, but it is a fairly stiff. It's got a good feel to it. I like the fact that the uh, hand rest is very quickly removed. It is just a, um, or the palm rest, it's a magnetic slap in, if you will, right here, just kind of, Sits in, it's great. I mean, it's really good, simple feel to it. The keys that I switched, uh, that I opted to go with on this one, I went with their linear 1.4 millimeter Titan switch, as opposed to the 1.8 millimeter actuation point tactile switch. Now, why did I do that? I wanted to see what it was like to use something that was a little bit shorter throw and a little more touchy. It's taken some time to get used to. I used on the other one was the um, Cherry MX Reds, which are very much more similar to the tactile 1.8 millimeter switch on this. My initial thought when I first started using it for about the first, I don't know, almost month, and it really took me that long to get used to it, was I wish I'd have bought the 1.8 tactile switch because it was so much more similar to what I'm used to in the throw, actuation time, sensitivity of the Cherry MX switch on the Corsair keyboard that I've been using. So if you're really a big fan of that, I'm going to suggest that you look at the 1.8. Now, if you're okay with giving something um, new a try or used to a shorter throw yet, this 1.4 millimeter switch is very, very, I don't want to say touchy, but responsive. And it feels nice once you get used to it. Again, I know it sounds weird that only that 0.4 millimeter can make a difference, but those that type a lot and game a lot, know that the feel of your keyboard makes a difference on a lot of things. And in this situation, like if you're like doing competitive gaming, everything. I do a lot of typing on here for work. So that makes a lot of difference as well. You know, how many times am I pressing a key inadvertently because I barely tapped it. Whereas before I knew I had like error in my, uh, errors time or uh, distance in my stroke. So I didn't, you know, have mistypes a lot. So I really do like this in the long run. I've gotten very much used to it and it feels great. In fact, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go on and let's open up Notepad and give you what it sounds like when I'm typing. So just kind of give you this a listen.
Okay, gives you an example. I made some mistakes in there. Once I tapped, I believe it was the number four. It was very simple to hit that. And I just barely touched it as part of my keystroke because I do have a little fatter fingers. And it caught that. Overall, again, it's taking time for me to get used to it. I like, I like how it sounds. It's not overly clicky, but I like a little bit of click. It's not like a um, Cherry MX Blue Switch, for example. Cherry MX Red has got a nice sound to it. You know, the browns are a little more quiet. You got those stealth switches that are like in my Orb Weaver Pro here that Razer does, and that's actually a pretty cool switch. But, well, you should hear more of the keyboard there. But, you know, when you get into this, it, it's got a very distinctive sound. And I really, I do like it. So, just to give you an idea as to what it sounds like. Now, features of this keyboard, I'm going to kind of point out here. One, beyond that, is the the illumination is nice. It's a, like an underlet, if you will. Uh, they're coming from, and you have that nice distance from the keyboard where they are up off. So it's not like a full plastic cover keycap. It's just like a keycap top over the uh, clear portion of the switch. So it gives it a really nice illumination effect as you're able to see here. Um, the media keys, well placed, and they feel nice. Like the volume has got. A, the volume switch has got a nice click to it each spot I go to. So what you can do, for example, is right now I've got it, uh, I've got the effects for the lighting, right? And you can adjust the brightness of the keyboard as opposed to through the software. You can do it right using the volume knob right on here, which I think that's awesome. You wanna go back to the, the uh, volume knob, well, it's simple, simple, you just click the volume. You can go ahead and you can also, you've got your um, key functions that you can do for your quick keys that are pre-programmed in on the keyboard as well, you know, if you prefer to do it that way. For your total text on here, obviously we talked about the fact that the activation point for the tactile or the Titan Switch uh, tactile is 1.8 millimeter, a little more similar to the Cherry MX Red Switch. And then you got the 1.4, which is what this one is in their Titan uh, linear switch. And that's, I do like this. Total uh, travel distance is 3.6 millimeters. Uh, they do have the integrated memory for settings and such, which is kind of nice. All the keys are remappable. Again, very nice. I haven't played around with the easy shift technology on this because of the macros. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple to program uh, their easy shift. I use it in, in the mouse a lot, which is you know pretty simple. Uh, it does come with, uh, obviously, a USB cable. I do like the fact that um, this is a very clean and simple um, It's very clean and simple keyboard. Side note, real quick. I do wish this came with a USB pass-through. Um, there's a lot of times where I like to be able to plug in a mouse real quick, and as opposed to going to... Uh, back of my computer, which is just more laziness than anything, I'll admit. Uh, but if you've got someone who's got your cables all hidden behind the desk, not that I do, but having this a little cleaner for something that's a little hot swappable would be nice. Um, you know, that's just a, a minor detail, especially at the price point. Uh, I do like the fact this does have a nice brush aluminum feel on the keyboard. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. it's. The, the, it's pretty simple. I mean, there's not a lot to this. I mean, you can get into these keyboards that have all these macro switches on it and, and hot keys as they program and, and volume sliders. You know, I, and this is, this keyboard is what it is. I, and I don't want that to sound negative or simple, but it's a gaming keyboard or it's a keyboard that people use for gaming. I hate the term gaming keyboard because it's not like it can't be used for anything but gaming. But obviously it ties in very well with their the rest of their peripherals. And, and I just... Overall, I've really enjoyed the fact that I'm not worrying about a software suite to control my keyboard and its experience uh, and becoming a negative or a positive one. In this situation, positive because the software is simple. And, you know, again, I switch away from a product that's, honestly, if the product itself, the mechanics of it was fantastic, but the software, because of how they tied it in with Asus's stuff, became such a negative experience that I stopped using a very good keyboard. 
So anyway, this is just supposed to be something, uh, again, as a quick experience of why I've used this keyboard for the last, um, I don't know, six, seven months now, I guess, and why I'm going to continue looking at a lot of the Rocket stuff because it seems like they have, uh, they've improved their support. Their software has improved a lot. Uh, I'd like to see some improvements in it still, but in the, in the end, it just works, and that's what I want. Anyway, uh, I am getting back to a regular schedule now that the kids are back in school. So hopefully each of these next, uh, I'll probably get three videos out a month. I'm hoping for four on every Tuesday, but we'll see what happens going forward here. And I'm, you know, that is my goal now is to be able to get back to this. I do still have to finish my 3950X build that I'm doing in my N1925 case. Uh, I did finally get a PCIe riser card in there. I think I showed that in my last video. It was, I don't know, three weeks ago. Uh, it's just been kind of crazy. So sorry for the time that it's been since between videos here, but I'm going to get back onto a regular schedule now. Uh, anyway, this was meant to be a nice, short, clean video today. I hope it was that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Please hit that uh, subscribe button for me as it does help me out here. And we will see you in the next one. Thanks. Oh,